scripture reading this morning comes from the Psalms. It is Psalm 117, and I read the psalm today in its entirety. And the psalm reads, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you people. For great is his steadfast love for us, and his faithfulness, the faithfulness of the Lord, endures forever. Praise him. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. There are 150 psalms in the Bible, right there in the middle. That's the way I was taught when I was growing up to find the psalms. Look right in the center, middle of the Bible, and open it up, and there they would be 150. And some, of course, are known for their great beauty, their inspiration, their guidance. Some are known for their passion and anger of the people writing the psalms in that moment and wanting to express that anger uh, to God. All of these different feelings. This this psalm, Psalm 117, it is known principally and firstly for its brevity. It is short. And each word is chosen carefully. And each word, as it's true with every psalm, is, is meaningful. I remember this week, I, I appreciated this song. Actually, I, I, I sought this psalm out for its brevity. Which is the shortest, I wondered. And there it was, Psalm 117. I appreciate people and that can write or can speak and can use an economy of words. Every word important, but chosen with care. This last week, as we were celebrating President's Day, I was, one of the things I remembered about Presidents Lincoln and Washington is they both were known for giving two very short but meaningful speeches. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address was 232 words long. And President Washington's second inaugural address was just 135 words. But each of them, each of them chosen with great care for the purpose that each was serving. One, of course, the Gettysburg Address to commemorate a great battle to remind people what the sacrifice was for and was at that time and we continue to be uh, for. And, and Washington's address, his second inaugural address, was to get people ready for this, something that had never happened, a second inauguration of a president. And both uh, were important. They were short, but they were carefully worded just exactly for their purpose. Well, what then were the purpose of the Psalms? We look at them and we read them, and they are, they're beautiful. And one of the purposes, one of the things we can say that the Psalms were in our four is to bring people together to worship. And that is what this almost is, is a call to worship. Come and worship God, this psalm is saying. And uh, in the worship, as we perceive that with the worship, it is what is God doing for us? What are God's qualities that we want to bring out, that we want to, uh, that we want to praise during this time of worship? Well, let's say that you had to write now uh, the 151st Psalm in the Bible. But let's say that you're given this restriction. Well, I want you to write the shortest Psalm. So instead of 30 words, let's get you down to 29 words for your Psalm. Now, that's going to make, if it were me, that's going to make me think. What do I want to put into this Psalm? I am certainly going to put in, if I am writing the shortest Psalm, what is most important what I believe is most important about God, or perhaps what's most important to me about God. And I think that's exactly what this psalmist did. This psalm writer was writing, and if we can, if we look carefully here, see what this person believed were the most important qualities of God. The most important qualities. You can think of these as maybe some of the qualities that everything else springs out of. Listen once again, just to that second verse. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Just 30 words to express what he wanted to express. And two of the words he chooses, two of the qualities to express about God, love and faithfulness. Not love. Yes, well, we talked about that 
Last week, if you were here, the love of God, this agape love, this self-sacrificing love of God. And it does not surprise me to find love as one of the principal characteristics that this psalmist wants to praise about God. We actually, we hear it uh, quite often. We hear the, the scripture quoted, uh, God is love. God is love, so finding it there maybe isn't a surprise to us, but I tell you, it is always a little surprising to me to find the psalmist, as they do over and over again, and the writers of the Old Testament, praising God for God's faithfulness. Love, yes. Love is important. We know that. Songs written about love, movies made about love, but Faithfulness. That is a little harder to put our finger on. And uh, one reason I think it's a little harder for me to think about it, I'll tell you, you know, writing a sermon about love last week, boy, it just uh, it says, well, it comes right out. No problem. What am I going to write? And here it is. In fact, there was so much, I had to get it down to the certain amount for the sermon. But faithfulness. What do we say about faithfulness and why is it so important? It is certainly less glamorous than love that has all the movies and the songs written about it. Faithfulness is all about the long haul, isn't it? Being faithful, not just over a short period, but being faithful over years and years. And here's what the psalmists are saying. This is why we are praising God. And it is easy, though, to take faithfulness for granted. Now think of the people in your lives who have been faithful to you. For me, certainly, the uh, people that have been faithful to me the longest are my parents, my mother and my father. And ever since I was little, they have been faithful to me. And as I've grown, as I've changed, their, that what they do to be faithful has changed. But let me tell you, I take that faithfulness for granted. I don't think about it. I think about my parents' love for me, but I don't often think about their faithfulness and how they have been absolutely faithful throughout my life. Faithfulness we take for granted. We take it for granted, or let's say this, we should be able to take it for granted, especially in those relationships that are closest to us. I hope that you have people in your life. Right now, I hope you have, growing up, people whose faithfulness you absolutely took for granted, you never even really thought about or considered. Well, here is what the psalmist is saying about God. And that's the kind of faithfulness we're talking about here. The kind that is so absolute, so complete, we take it for granted. God is faithful. God created this world. He made it, and He loved this world. It's a beautiful, and He said, it is good that I created this world. And this world is a good place. But of course, not everything goes the way God would wish it to go. He creates us with this will to, to do as we would, and so often we turn our backs on God. We're given the opportunity to be in relationship with God, and we reject God. And so in the midst of this, in the midst of this rebellion, what does God do? Does he, does he say, well, that's it, let's go on, let's, uh, let's scrap this program, and let's do humanity 2.0. We'll go on to the next version of humanity, see how that goes, we'll try to get the bugs out. No. God remains faithful. And it is one of the messages of the Old Testament. And it is something that the people of the Old Testament wondered at. We fall away. We make such mistakes. But God is always with us. God always remains faithful to us. Again, the message, one of the prime messages of the Old Testament. God's love, yes, and God's faithfulness. You think, oh, well, that's great. Wonderful. Yes, God is faithful. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. It's very important. It is something I can give thanks to God for and praise God for. I'll be praising God for His creation. I'll be praying God, praising God for being uh, faithful to me. That's great. But what effect does it really have on me here now today that God is faithful? I mean, I know everything depends upon it, and I'm grateful for it, just like I'm grateful for creation. But what impact on my daily life? Well, we have to remember. There is a pattern that perhaps we, another thing we take for granted in the Old Testament is we hear about the great qualities of God. Let's give an example. We talked about love last week. And we talk about this pattern over and over again. We're talking about God's qualities. 
God has the quality of love, of self-sacrificing love. And so, of course, would his son, Jesus Christ, who shares his character. God loves, and so Christ loves. And here we are as followers of Christ, and we are called to love too. And we see this about all of God's great qualities. God is merciful. So Christ is merciful and showed mercy throughout his ministry. And so we are called to be merciful too. God is forgiving. So of course his son Jesus Christ is forgiving. And so we are called to be forgiving as well. And here we go. God is faithful. Faithful to his creation. Faithful to each and every one of us. And so, of course, God's Son is faithful. And as the scripture says, God's Son was faithful even to death on the cross. That's how faithful Christ was to God and to each one of us who were saved. God is faithful. So Christ is faithful, so we too are called to be faithful. This isn't something we can take for granted in our lives. Just as we can't take for granted the love, the high love that we're called to, to love the unlovable. We can't take, we can't take that for granted. We have, to, we have to be in that. We have to be thinking about it. We have to be working on it in our lives. And so should we be working on faithfulness. And that can be tricky because, again, love can seem to us very simple and straightforward. But faithfulness is, can be more complicated because it can mean different things over different times in our lives. For instance, uh, uh, my, uh, my parents that I mentioned before, what did it mean to be faithful to me as, as a little child, as a baby? Well, it meant one thing when I was a baby. To be faithful to me meant something else as I went into elementary school. And there was a certain letting go there and being willing to let me stand on my own and let me fall down and get up by myself. And then all the older I got, the more letting go there was. And being faithful to me really meant, yes, caring about me and loving me, but also letting me be a grown-up and letting me be an adult. It can be complicated in this parent-child relationship to know where we are in this act of being faithful to our children or to our parents. We grow, we start completely dependent on our parents, and then hopefully we get to the point in our lives where the gift we give our parents, our faithfulness, and the way we show it to our parents is simply by being grown-ups. Right? Taking care of ourselves, doing what we need to do, and taking care of our own lives. That's a wonderful gift to be able to give them. Because someday it may come that we need to take care of them. And that's what it means to be faithful to our parents, to take care of them. We go from being faithful to parents being, to being obeying them, to being able to do things on our own, to maybe possibly someday to caring for them ourselves. We need to be faithful in our lives. And it can be difficult. It can be complicated to know just what we need to do in order to be faithful. And think about this. Faithful, so faithful to our families, faithful to these closest relationships, that's something we need in our lives. But two, how about uh, for those of us who are married, faithful to our spouses. Now when we say that, when we say faithful to our spouses, we are usually, at least I do, but most of the time I think most people are thinking of that vow that they made, probably with some words like this, forsaking all others, keep only unto him or her so long as you both shall live. Very nice, polite way to put it. Forsaking all others, keep only unto her. And that is being faithful in marriage. But of course, yes, that's true. But that's only being faithful to one of the vows that we make. Let's think of it this way. In our relationship, especially with our spouses, when we've made these uh, promises, let's remember all the vows we made. So that being faithful to a spouse doesn't just mean keeping only unto that spouse. It also means remembering the rest of our vows. And what were they? Well, probably one, one I love, I love this word, cherish. 
to make the vow that throughout our lives and in our relationship with this person, we cherish them. Cherish this person. That is a vow that we have made. And how frequently do we do it? How seriously do we take that vow 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later to cherish the one that we are with? It's an opportunity we have to be faithful to our spouse, to cherish, to honor, to love, all of these things, all vows that we make. And we have the opportunity in our lives to be like God, to be faithful, by keeping all the vows that we have made, taking each one of them seriously. And I think it too, one other way I think we think of the word faithful, is a faithful friend, right? Those two go together. And there's something special about that and worth mentioning here. It's worth thinking about being more faithful in our lives. We are bound uh, to our spouses. We are bound to our children uh, by law and by blood. But friends, Friends, we have by choice. We have our friends by choice. And so there is an aspect of through good and bad. Through good and bad. That, that takes on a special meaning when you are bound to somebody by nothing more than your love and your affection for that person. How do we know our friends? And we learn this as we grow. It is the ones who remain faithful through good times and through bad. And that gets us to the most important way that we can be faithful in our lives. And that we can grow in our faithfulness. And think of our faithfulness as something that we can work on. And that is our faithfulness to God. And how much of the New Testament, especially the letters of Paul and others, are taken up with this idea of remaining faithful to God. Because so many of these churches and Christians were facing great persecution. It wasn't easy to be faithful. It wasn't easy to stay faithful to God. And it's true of us today. I mean, we're not being, certainly not persecuted the way the early Christians were, but there are times when it is not easy to be a Christian. It is not even easy to proclaim uh, that we treat all people with love and kindness. That's not always a popular, popular idea. But that's exactly what we need to proclaim it the loudest, when it isn't popular. There was a Methodist minister, I read his book many years ago. His name was James Kemp. He's passed away. He was a preacher, and he loved to use uh, uh, Dr. Seuss uh, as illustrations in his sermons. And he wrote a book called The Gospel According to Dr. Seuss. And the one story of Dr. Seuss that he mentioned most often, and he was most compelled by, is the story of Horton Hatches an Egg. And you may remember this story as the story of an elephant who agrees to sit on an egg until it hatches. Or actually doesn't agree to that. He agrees to sit on the egg for a short time, and then the mom, mom never comes back. And he's stuck on this egg, but he will not move because he is faithful. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. This story is all about faithfulness. And what happens to this ele elephant? He is ridiculed. He is held up for mockery. And he will not give up his faithfulness. The word for today is faithfulness. It isn't glamorous. It isn't easy. It doesn't come quickly. Faithfulness appears in the long haul. Faithfulness isn't the story of when Harry met Sally. Faithfulness is the story of when Harry and Sally have been together 35 years. And what is happening then? Are they keeping their vows? Are they faithful? Faithfulness is about the long haul. Then may God help us each one of us here today to be faithful to one another and to God through the good times and through the bad so that those around us can come to rely can come to take for granted our faithfulness let us bow in prayer
Loving God, we do give thanks for the many blessings that you give us. Loving God, help us to respond to your many gifts to us by being faithful to you. 